Hello fellow, hello fellow Flop Coaster, today I have another issue video, a kind of a continuation of the Ukrainian crisis that I kind of talked about in a previous issue video, and well, let's get right into it. So, today I'm going to talk about a little bit of a, a conference, a video conference that I had with another school, and that school is in Poland. It is called the American School of Warsaw, and you can check out their Instagram, they have been doing a lot of things to try to help the Ukrainian refugees in that country and we kind of talked about what's going on there and we also talked about our service and I'm kind of a member of this group called Code Miracle which we do have a, we do have an Instagram called Code Miracle if you want to check what we've been doing out and we've been trying to we have been uh, fundraising in our school in order to in order to help raise money and funds for the Ukrainian crisis and we've been sending that money directly to the American School of Warsaw, who is located in Poland, and as I said, is giving direct and indirect aid to Ukrainian refugees. And today we're going to talk about what we discussed in the meeting and what's going on over there. And basically what's going on in Poland is that there are hundreds and there are thousands of Ukrainian refugees just in the subways, on the, in the streets. And signs have been put up in Ukrainian and Russian so that Ukrainian people can understand them. And Polish and Ukrainian and, Ruf and Russian is all quite different. In fact, Ukrainian is more similar to Russian than Polish. So it's, it's quite a hard environment right now in Poland where Ukrainian people can't read signs. They can't read, um, they can't read anything there. They can't read the maps. So a lot of help has been, a lot of work has been gone into like making maps for Ukrainian people and to making maps and doing a lot of things where we can show these show the Ukrainian refugees where they can stay and so yeah basically at the peak of the situation like i just said the subways and the places and all the public places were filled to the brim with Ukrainian refugees and people trying to leave and it was crazy apparently well from the things that i heard from the students that we talked from in students of american school of warsaw and it was very interesting and another thing uh and now, nowadays, the, the, the entire climax on the peak has, you know, kind of um, sold down a little bit. There's a lot less refugees. And however, the issue is still obviously blatantly ongoing because a lot of Ukrainian people still want to get back home. And a lot of them are living in temporary or not very good homes in Poland. Although the Polish government is trying and a lot of people there are trying. So yeah, it's a crazy situation over there. So I, or so I heard from our friends in the American School of Warsaw. And what the what the school that I've just been talking about, this Polish international school, have been kind of doing there, is first of all they've made a kind of center where a food distribution center. They've got a lot of donations, and they got the entire school community to collaborate on making food store, food distribution centers, food storages. Um, even direct families taking in Ukrainian families within their homes and then there's a donation system within the school where you could donate a lot of things like toys, food, essentials, well, a lot of these things were put into the school and categorized and then people who took in on Ukrainian families could go there and take things that they need. And they made this cool little system that really did work well and one of the students that, we, that I talked to actually had in fact in her family took a Ukrainian family in and apparently at first it was really hard to understand what each other were saying and there was a little baby and she she felt really heartbroken that this kid was dealing with this war situation because he he doesn't know I don't I don't I don't know if the kid's a hero or she but like that kid does not know what is going on. They are they are very young and they don't know what's going on. They're innocent. And it, it broke her heart, the student's heart, to see that, that, this, that this child was put into this incredibly unjust, unfair situation. And a lot, and they say now, she says now that in her family, the Ukrainian family has finally settled down a little bit. And now they have a lot deeper of a connection than they had before. And apparently a lot of these refugees are leaving their family members, dads, moms in in the in ukraine because they can't leave or they're they're going to fight the Ru russian invasion directly and it, it's really heartbreaking to see that this this atrocity that should be left behind in the past is happening again in ukraine 
And of course, I know there's a there has been a lot of conflicts like this in the past, uh, past dec past well centuries and centuries of human conflict. However, this really feels a lot more direct to me because well, it really happened within my lifetime, and I don't know if it feels new to me. I I I don't know if that sounds really entitled or not, but it really does feel new to me, and it's shocking. And apparently, it did feel shocking for them too. At first, they found the situation kind of unrealistic, like, wow, this is really happening. All of these people are rushing into Poland into and going through the Polish border, and there's hundreds of thousands of refugees, and it's crazy. Or that that's what they thought. And then they realized that, hey, this could be us. This could have been us if Polish was under siege or something, and we could be in that kind of situation. And we, we could still be, in fact, if Russia invades Poland after Ukraine. So now we need to, do, we need to really think about this, and we need, to, we need to really help, we need to try to help. And that's what they did. And that's what I, although I, it's more indirect and a lot less than what they've been doing, because what they've been doing is really direct, really on-hand work. We've been fundraising for that, and we have donated a lot, uh, not a lot, but a, a moderate amount to them so that through our fundraisers so that they can work and they, they can help and apparently they've got all they actually got quite fundraised quite a bit from the various fundraisers there and from us and yeah it's a it's a very interesting situation well it's not an interesting it's a terrible situation however I found the students there really really impressing a really well really impressive Impressive, and they were just so 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 deeply connected to it and they were working so hard to give direct aid to these refugees and it's really inspiring you know and again i really want to keep doing what we've been doing to create fundraisers because it's an ongoing issue these refugees they're not disappearing into the air after a couple of months they are they are in poland and they aren't gonna go back where are they gonna go back to ukraine where where the invasion is still going on no even though it's just left to headlines, even though currently we think the oh it's 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 old news now. Well, there are still refugees who are separated from their families in Poland and probably a lot of the bordering countries, and these refugees aren't going anywhere. And the conflict in Ukraine hasn't gone anywhere either. So yeah, this is still an ongoing issue, and I really wish we could do, we we could do more to combat it and try to help. For example, the American School of Warsaw, who is who is going on and doing all the stuff. Yeah, and that's my general kind of overview on this issue and what I've tried to do, what we as a group tried to do in my group and called Miracle, Code Drive Miracle on Instagram, and what they've been trying to do in the American School of Warsaw. And yeah, it's it's all really insane, it's all really crazy, and this entire situation is quite unjust. However, I just found it beautiful in a lot of ways. Like a lot of, you know, a lot of terrible things like these, these people, these families have been split apart in Ukraine and different countries and refugees. All these terrible things are happening, but at the same time, it really shows the human capacity for em empathy, in my opinion. Because who would have thought that this entire international community just donated loads and loads of stuff, money, and and took in families themselves in their houses. And I think it really shows that human are, humans are empathetic creatures and creatures and we're, we're good. And this collaboration, and this positive community who's trying to help, I think that's really beautiful. And it's incredibly ironic that this kind of beauty is really hard to see unless in times of extreme crisis, such as this Ukrainian conflict. And I find that really ironic. And that's pretty much all I have to say on the issue. And I really hope that we can find some new things to do back in me, my school to, you know, raise more funds and do a lot more stuff. And yeah, um, yeah that's pretty much all I have to say, say about. Um, check out our Instagram or their Instagram to check out what they've been doing. I believe in their Instagram, they have donation links there as well. So if you want to lend a hand in this issue, you can definitely do that. And thank you for watching. And like always, your plot poster, Aaron the Plot Poster. Although this wasn't much of a plot, it was more of just a, you know, a real life issue that people really should be paying more attention to still. Not, not it just in the past, still. Just because, remember, just because it disappeared from the headlines doesn't mean the issue disappeared. Have a great day.